blend, 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 blend. I woke up this morning with this kind of this nostalgic itch that I really need to scratch. And the only solution is to do a big eye look using dun, 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 old school MAC shadows. Carbon, nylon, soft brown, brown script, stars and rockets, satin top, ever heard of them? That, that is the sound of every 16 year old leaving the chat. For the rest of us who remember, <laughs> the challenge should you choose to accept is to put as many old school classic MAC eyeshadows on your eye as you possibly can. Well, that's what I'm gonna do today anyway. You're welcome to join. <laughs> I've gone ahead and primed my eyes, and I think I wanna start with something, we used to call it the base color. So something similar to the color of my skin, so like maybe this one or this one. If I remember correctly, I feel like this could be Blanc type. <laughs> just gonna dust that a little bit under the brow here just to sort of settle the tackiness of that eye primer. You know what's so funny? I have a comedically bad memory. Like I cannot remember anything of any importance. <laughs> uh, names, faces, dates. But if you ask me to identify a MAC shadow from seven years ago, oh, I'm on it. 100% accuracy. Uh, next, I think I want to go with um, Omega. So I've actually kept this in the original compact because this lives in my contour drawer. I really love this grayed putty, desaturated putty tone for contouring the face, especially just the very hollows of the cheekbone. It's subtle, but effective. Okay, next I want to go in for perhaps a little bit more of a warmer crease color. So this one here is soft brown. And I know that because it's one that I use all the time. And I've said this in a previous video, but I'll reiterate it. I still really enjoy MAC shadows. Uh, I think that they get less airtime now um, on YouTube just because the market is so saturated and there's just a new product every single day it feels like. But there are some select MAC shadows that still frequent my rotation and I'll, I'll point them out as they go, but Omega and Soft Brown, such winners. Uh, moving to a deeper brown, uh, this one is Brown Script, which is a kind of very reddened, uh, rusty brown, super saturated, great for warm eyes. I promise I will include some cooler tones in this look. I'm just, I actually don't know what I'm doing yet <laughs> for full disclosure, but it will go where it takes us. Okay, quick intermission on the eyeshadow front because I wanna show you guys something that I've been doing a lot recently. So once I've done all my crease color, I like to go in with a like soft black coal and do a bit of a wedge on this outer corner. And I do this because I find a lot of the time I feel like my eyeshadow looks lack intensity, like they're not piercing enough. And this really helps because it creates this pitch blackness and this immediate smokiness. It brings the drama to the table, essentially. So I create a little bit of a wedge here. And then I'm gonna take a bit of a, sort of a small angled brush or any sort of small brush and just buff out these edges so that they don't look quite so jagged. And then we can return back to the eyeshadows and I'm gonna take a black eyeshadow to, to soften out that eyeliner even further. You know what, even back in the day when the options were limited, I feel like it was widely understood that corrupt was just a bit meh. Like it's not a real proper black black. And then uh, Makeup Geek released Corrupt and everyone just lost their minds. By the way, Corrupt, still my absolute favorite black eyeshadow of all time. It is so dense and black, it is pitch black. Carbon, on the other hand, I, I think it's a safe skip, <laughs> unless you want a gray shadow that's pretending to be black. Let us go in with a little bit of smut. The, the color that can't decide if it wants to be gray or burgundy. You just have to pick one, mate. I don't know, this is kind of a little bit of a meh shade for me. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of here, maybe? Yeah, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. But I have to make it symmetrical. I'm gonna mix uh, brown script and carbon to get sort of a, d a deeper brown going on here. Guess where I'm going tonight? The gym. <laughs> One eternity later. All right, next I'm gonna take a brush and just dampen it with some Fix Plus. Oh my God, I love the way Fix Plus smells. Man, if they bottled that, I, I would wear it. I would wear that fragrance. Um, I'm gonna take Vex. And Vex is an interesting one. It's kind of like, you know, an opal, how it has that interesting uh, green pink shift. That's exactly what Vex is. I can probably declutter Vex, to be honest. This shade is... 
I'm not excited. You're not exciting me. I'm gonna go with all the glitters on the innermost portion of the eye. Yeah, so pretty. Next, I'm actually gonna go in with green smoke. I have no idea why I own this color because I detest green on me. I know that's bound to offend some people, but green on me is just yuck. You'll see, I'll show you right now. I love it on other people, but on me, I don't know, it does something funny with my skin tone. And then Club. Club is like a blue-brown shift. It, it's a really beautiful shade. It was then recreated by like a hundred different brands. I think if you wanted like a really awesome blue-brown shift, then just get the MAC blue-brown pigment. Honestly, the, the shift is um, more prominent in that one, but I am going to blend this into this outer corner. All right, before we go any further, I'm just gonna run off and do my complexion, my base makeup. So BRB. If only it were that easy, huh? All right, we're gonna keep going because I have stamina. More MAC shadow. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with nylon. Nylon is one of those shades. It will always be a staple in my collection. I've never found a shadow to replace this. It is the best, most punchy tear duct highlight ever. I also love to add just a little bit of nylon onto the very ball of the eyelid. I find it just emphasizes the convexity of the eye, gives a lot of dimension, a lot of shape. Yeah, dude, meh, nylon, oh, absolute staple. And for the lower lash line, I think I wanna go in with coppering, coppering, coppering. <laughs> gonna run that over the inner half of the lash line. Blend that out with a little bit of rule, which is a great primary orange. Plot twist. We're gonna go back to smolder and I'm gonna run that on the outer half of the lash line. Smudge that out just a little bit, just so that edge isn't quite so hard. And then I'm gonna take Stars and Rockets, which I love Stars and Rockets. It's a really cool duochrome that shifts like pinky, bluey, purple, ah, oh, unicorn shade for sure. And I'm going to put it on top of the black base because duochromes really perform well over black bases. It, it enhances and brings forth all of the, all of the dimensions. I'm aware that this makeup is going in a direction that is probably not anyone's cup of tea. <laughs> but today I did the, today the idea is not to look good. It is to be a human canvas. It is an ode to Mac. And then I'm gonna finish where I started because that's so poetic with a little bit more of that Omega. This is a great perimeter shade. So just using that to soften any of these hard edges. It's neutral enough that it doesn't impart too much color. It just gives you that professional seamless edge. All right, I just popped on a bunch of individuals. These are actually by Mac um, and they're lovely. They're lovely individuals, but honestly, Ardell do the same job. So um, I don't think that's necessarily the place to splurge. And then I'm gonna try this uh, Mac uh, Bold and Bad Lash. This is not an old favorite. This is actually the first time I've ever used it. And then this mascara also has a separate component, which I believe is a lower lash mascara with an itty bitty wand. I actually think that's brilliant. I think that is genius. I think that's pretty much the eyes done. I know it's a bit wacky, but I kind of think it's cool. Kind of cool, kind of unexpected maybe. I figure since we've come this far, I might as well do a full face of MAC and, and show you guys what I'm using. So I'm gonna start with a bronzer. First, I wanna say this is Give Me Sun. I'm sure the Give Me Sun looks lovely on people that are not me. <laughs> um, I much prefer to use the Mineralized Skin Finish in medium tan because it's just that little bit less bronze. Uh, just it's a little bit better on my skin tone. So I'm gonna use that very sparingly. Also, can we just take a moment for these beautiful earrings? These are by the Jewelry Society. I'll link them down below. Ah. Oh, so my style. Also, I just wanna do like a tiny little bit of that Omega into the hollows of the cheekbone, like I mentioned earlier. It's just like, like this. You don't have to make the noise. <laughs> That's not an important part of the application, although it, may, it might help. I've fallen in love, um, back in love with this brush. I've always loved it, but now I extra love it for all sorts of things, like even things like highlight and contour. It just gives the softest application. Doop doop. Maybe we should do a bit of blush first. I wanna wear MAC Warm Soul because I feel like that's such a classic, but I don't love this color on me. <laughs> I, don't, I think these muted brownish, uh, rusty kind of tones just don't do me any favors, but hey, I'm willing to revisit it. Have you guys noticed that I'm wearing a lot more blush recently? 
Are you proud of me? I hope so. It's taken about 10 years to get to this stage where I'm comfortable wearing blush and I don't feel like an absolute clown. Highlight. Duh, soft and gentle. It's so funny. When I first purchased soft and gentle years ago, I uh, didn't love it because it was too shiny. <laughs> Previous cream, I said, no, this highlight too shiny. I get why some people say this is glittery because some of the reflect pieces of reflect are slightly larger, but I think that that stops it from looking frosty. For lips, I want to do a quintessential MAC nude lip. Uh, so I'm going to start with the MAC uh, lip pencil in strip down. And then I'm going to top with freckle tone, which was one of my favorites, if I remember correctly. Oh, wow. That lip feels really dated to me. <laughs> In all seriousness, I love MAC. MAC has such a special place in my heart. You know, when I think purple, I think stars and rockets. When I think a transition shade, I think soft brown. When I think early 2000s, I think strip down. Like it's just such a, like a big part of all my makeup memories. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and maybe you don't necessarily want to put 17 MAC eyeshadows on your eyes, but I think it would be nice if you, if you still have them in your collection to revisit them and fall in love with them all over again. Uh, so yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Definitely come say hello to me on Instagram at Kareem and Mikimi. I'd love to chat to you there and I'll speak to you very soon.